Hello and welcome. This tutorial will show you how to call an ION API in the Infor OS portal, including using Postman, a popular tool to test your APIs. Additionally, I will give some pointers on how to do so from your own client application. Calling an ION API is dependent on what type of client application you are using. If an application is already authenticated with Infor OS, you would receive an Infor OS token, which can be used to call an ION API. This is what we would call an OAuth to SAML bear grant, which is the first scenario in this slide. To be logged into the Infor OS portal means you are already authenticated, so the same token that was issued to you via login for single sign-on can be reused if you are making an ION API call from the Infor OS portal itself or from within any of the other SSO authenticated applications. So let's quickly see a demo of how this looks. In this example, we'll call a simple API, which will return the details of the current logged in user. Within the OS portal, under the API gateway, select Available APIs. Here you will see a list of various APIs and their associated documentation registered by the Infor API gateway. In our example, search for the IFS service API, select the desired documentation, and scroll to the IFS user section. We'll be using this get API. Currently, the details are empty, and once we press execute, you should see the field replaced by my personal details in the 200 success code. And as you can see, there is a bearer token issued here for this request. So this is the OAuth2 SAML bearer token type. And of course, the client application I used here is the documentation page of the registered API itself. The next scenario involves calling mobile or web applications. In this case, the application is not yet authenticated within the gateway. The user must authorize the mobile application to call the ION API on their behalf. This type of interaction uses the OAuth2 authorization code grant. To demonstrate, we'll use the Postman client instead of a mobile application. Now under Authorized Apps, select Add New App and create a new authorized app. We'll call it Postman Web App Demo. Choose the type Web Application. Provide a brief description, and the redirect URL and authorized JavaScript origins fields are the same callback URL. Afterwards, select Save, and the gateway will generate your client ID and client secret. Next, you can download and view the credentials file which will look like this. The file will hold the details to call the API in Postman. So to see how to use these credentials, let's look at Postman. First, we will create a new request collection using the authorization methods template. You can also use the plus sign at the top right to do so. As you can see here, I've already set up a method for our demo. Next, select the authorization type as OAuth 2.0, and to acquire a new access token, enter the relevant credentials into the required input parameters. After entering a simple token name, we'll use the following mapping. Grant type is the authorization code. The callback URL is the embedded Postman link. The authorization URL is a concatenation of values PU plus OA. Similarly, the token URL is a concatenation of PU plus OT. The client ID is value CI, and the client secret is CS. Now we can request the token, which should take me to a login screen. Remember, this is an activity in which the user must be present. The sign-on must be performed and the user is required to authorize the application, i.e. Postman, to call the API. Once signed in, you can see Infor OS is prompting the request for approval regarding Postman using our credentials. Click Allow. This will provide a new token within the Postman application. We can test this by calling the same Get API using the previous demo. 
and you can see that the call was successful. Now, let's look into the resource owner grant type. In this case, the calling application is not a mobile or web application, but is either a service, system, or backend application. Since it is an app calling an API, there is no user interaction present, which requires the OAuth2 resource owner grant for a silent interaction. Going back to the OS portal, we'll create another authorized app with the client type backend service. Provide the description as follows. Postman as a calling system. Click, save, and download the credentials. They will look like this. We'll use these credentials to now create another request. Select the authorization type as OAuth 2.0. After entering the token name, we'll use the following mapping. Grant type as the password credentials. The token URL is the concatenation of PU plus OT. The client ID is value CI and the client secret is CS. The username is the service account, account key, SAAK, and the password is the service account, secret key, SASK. Now we can request our token. Next, select Use Token and call the Get API. Here, we see the values were successfully populated. So here we have demonstrated how to call an ION API in three distinct ways. One, by using the SAML bearer grant, which was demoed from the documentation page of the InfraOS portal. Second, we used the Postman authorization code grant, where the user logs in via their username and password to authenticate and to allow Postman to call the API on their behalf. Then we demonstrated if the calling system is a service or one with no user interaction. In that case, the user would need the resource owner grant with details supplied when getting the token. And lastly, if the API allows itself to be called in an anonymous fashion, this means no credentials are passed and the gateway can successfully pass the request through. This fourth scenario is strictly discouraged unless the API is providing some non-sensitive information and is open for everyone, thus requiring no demo. Now, if you are building your own client application and you want to call an ION API, you can refer to our GitHub in which we have published the source code on how to get tokens for various types of OAuth2 grants. Your app can be a Java or .NET application. We have supplied code for both. Also, you can check out our dev portal to find additional resources around Infor APIs, tutorials, and best practices. And if it is a different type of application and you need to write new code, you are welcome to get it reviewed by us and contribute to our open source community. We also have SDKs for our custom mobile and home page widgets for your applications to interact with. And this concludes our demo. I hope you have enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you wish to see more, check out our YouTube channel to find the latest content.